How can you implement authentication using an external identity provider? In this video, I'm going to show you how to connect Supabase authentication with an ASP.NET Core API so that we can authenticate with our API using JSON web tokens generated by Supabase. So we want to connect Supabase authentication with an ASP.NET Core web API. In case you're not familiar, here's a brief introduction to Supabase. Supabase is an open source cloud platform that brands itself as a Firebase alternative. It offers a set of tools and services that you can use to build your applications. The core feature of Supabase is a cloud database that uses Postgres. In fact, the entire Supabase stack is mostly built on top of Postgres. You also have access to authentication, which is what we will be using in this video. But other than that, Supabase offers cloud storage. It gives you access to edge functions, which are very similar to AWS Lambdas or Azure functions. And you also get some real-time capabilities. For example, you can react when something happens happens inside of your database. This is a screenshot from the Supabase user interface and what you are seeing here is the schema visualizer which lets you see what you have inside of the database. Although having a Postgres database in the cloud is absolutely awesome, the core focus of this video is going to be Supabase authentication. This is a complete user management system that you can plug into any type of application. Supabase authentication also supports many social authentication providers such as GitHub, Facebook, Google, Microsoft, and so on. And it also has a very generous free plan which comes with 50,000 monthly active users. This is what our authentication flow is going to look like when using Supabase. Our users are going to authenticate with Supabase directly using either an email or a password or some social authentication provider and Supabase is going to give the user an access token if they authenticate successfully. Then the user can use this access token to send requests to our API and we will have to configure our API to authenticate JSON web tokens that are generated by Supabase. If the user provides a valid access token, we are going to give them back an API response. And here is a short code snippet of what the authentication with Supabase is going to look like. We are going to be using JWT bearer authentication and we need to set up a few token validation parameters. We will need to acquire the issuer signing key, the valid audience and the valid issuer for our JSON web token. We are going to find all of these values from the Supabase user interface. So let's head over into Supabase and see how we can set up Supabase authentication. I'm now on the Supabase dashboard and if you want to follow along, just head over to supabase.com, create an account and log into your Supabase dashboard. The next thing you will need to do is to create a Supabase project and I already did this to save us some time. You would need to click on the new project button, choose your organization, and then you will need to provide the name and the database password for your project. You can also choose which region you want your project to be hosted in. Central EU is the closest location to me, so I'm going to choose this to have the least latency. Let's click cancel and go back to the project that I created. This is what the project dashboard looks like and from the sidebar menu you can access the many Supabase features. I'm going to focus on authentication and the first thing you will see here is a list of users registered with your application. I already have one user that I created for the purpose of this video which I will be using to obtain an access token but if you want to add a new user you can send them an invitation from the user interface or you can manually add a new user with an email and password. Let's take a quick look at a few more features that Supabase has. You can define custom policies for role level security, which allows you to integrate with the Supabase database feature. You can also configure your social authentication providers. Right now, I only support login with email and password, but you can enable the many social authentication providers that Supabase integrates with. You can also configure the rate limits, the email templates that are sent to users, such as a confirmation email. You can also set up the redirect URLs for your application. And a beta feature, which is very interesting, is authentication hooks. An excellent use case that this offers is customizing the access token by introducing additional claims. The function that you provide here is actually a database function and you can run it to customize your JSON web token. A few more things that we will need to support authentication. Let me head over to my project settings and then I will go into the API section. Here you can see the public URL of my project. This is the URL that I will be calling to access the authentication API to get an access token. 
Another thing that I will need is a project API key and you have two keys to choose from, the public key and the secret key. For our example, we will be using the public key and you can obtain it from this screen. Now let's jump into Postman and I will show you how to obtain an access token. The first API request that we will send is to obtain an access token. We're going to use the public URL of our Superbase project and I'm going to access the authentication service version 1 and I'm looking for the token endpoint. I also need to specify a grant type query parameter which is going to be set to password. Another thing I will need to provide is an API key header which is going to contain the public API key that I just showed you on the Superbase dashboard. The body of this request is going to contain the email and password of the user that I'm trying to authenticate and assuming that this user is registered I can send this request and get back an access token and some additional information. Let's take a look at what we get inside. So here is the access token, which is a valid JSON web token. The expiration time is one hour. You also get a refresh token. You get some user information that contains a lot of details about your user. Now let's first take a look at the access token and inspect what we have inside. If we decode the JSON web token that I just acquired, we can see what we have inside of the payload. You can see that the audience is set to authenticated. The issuer is going to be the authentication service, which is deployed for our project. And we also get the user identifier and the subclaim and some additional user information in the other claims that are present here. So we will be using some of this information to implement authentication in ASP.NET Core. One more thing I want to show you is how to use the refresh token that we also get as part of this response. We need to send another API request. It's also going to be a post request to the authentication service and we're going to send this request to the token endpoint. Except this time we will specify a grant type of refresh token. We also need to provide the API key as a request header and in the request body we need to provide the refresh token value. So if I send this request I can get another access token with a new refresh token. If I send this request again, you will see that the response is cached and I will keep getting the same response back. So this is how you can obtain an access token and a refresh token using the Superbase API. Having said that, Superbase also has many client-side libraries that you can use to integrate with your UI applications. And now let's jump into Visual Studio and see how we can configure authentication using Superbase. What I have here is a mostly empty ASP.NET Core Web API and we're going to start by adding authentication support using JSON Web Tokens. To achieve this, we will need to install an additional NuGet package. So let's go ahead and look for JWT Bearer. I'm going to install the latest version of Microsoft ASP.NET Core authentication JWT Bearer. And then let's see how we will integrate this into our .NET Core application. I'm going to start by saying Builder services and I'm going to add authorization services then I'm going to say builder services add authentication and then I'm going to chain a call to add JWT bearer which was introduced by the NuGet package that we just installed. I can provide a delegate to this method to configure the JWT bearer options and what I want to do is to set some values on the token validation parameters. I'm going to create a new token validation parameters instance and here I want to set a few values. So I'm going to set the validate issuer signing key to true. Then I will need to provide an issuer signing key and I'm going to show you how we will obtain this. I'm going to leave this empty for a moment. I will also need to provide a valid audience and a valid issuer for our JSON web token authentication. I'm going to acquire all of these values from my application settings. So let's start with the valid issuer. I'm going to say builder configuration and then let's access authentication valid issuer. And then let's access the authentication section and I'm looking for the valid issuer. Let's use a similar approach to get the valid audience. I'm just going to replace this with valid audience. And then for the issuer signing key, I need to provide a new instance of an issuer signing key and I'm going to specify a symmetric security key. This requires an array of bytes that represents the actual key and I'm going to acquire this from application settings as well. I'm just going to specify it outside of this delegate. So I'm going to say encoding UTF-8 and we're going to call the get bytes method and I'm going to provide the JSON web token secret value to this method. We also need to specify these values in our application settings. So let's go ahead and create an authentication section and I'm going to specify the valid issuer as the first value. And the actual value is going to point to the authentication service of our Superbase project. 
then I need to specify a valid audience. And if you recall from the JSON web token that we inspected, the value is authenticated. And then I need to provide the JSON web token secret. And I'm not going to specify that inside of my application settings. A better approach would be to provide this value using the user secrets feature. So let's go ahead and create the authentication section here. And then I'm going to provide the actual JWT secret. When we start the application, it will be able to pick up the secret value. And then the next question is, how do we obtain the JSON Web Token secret? Well, for this, I will need to go back to the Superbase user interface for a moment. And if you open up the SQL editor from the sidebar and run this query, show app settings JWT secret, you will see the JSON Web Token secret, which is present inside of your database. So this is what we will need to use to configure our issuer signing key. This is a very sensitive value that you should keep secret and you need to be careful not to expose it publicly. For example, inside of your source control, which is why I'm providing it as a user secret. So I added the JSON Web Token secret to my user secrets and this should be enough to configure the issuer signing key. One more thing I want to do is to add an authorization requirement to my API endpoint by calling require authorization. And this will require anyone calling this endpoint to provide a valid access token. If I open up the HTTP file and I have my API running behind the scenes and I send a request to this endpoint, you will see that we get back a 401 unauthorized response. So what I need to do is to provide an access token. So I'm going to create an access token variable and I'm going to give it the value of the access token that we obtain from Superbase. Then we need to provide this as an authorization header. So I'm going to say bearer and then we need to specify the access token inside of the authorization header. So now if I send the request, you will see that we get back a 200 OK response, which is just going to return the claims that are present on this JSON web token. And you can see that our super base authentication is working with our ASP.NET Core Web API. If you enjoyed this video, then you should watch this video next. Check out my modular monolith and clean architecture courses. Join my Patreon to access the source code for this video. And until next time, stay awesome.